RuPaul's Drag Race, meet the 13 queens of season 12. Squirrel friends start your engines because the 12th season of RuPaul's Drag Race premieres tonight, and fans are gagging over this year's Ladies of Drag. Widow Von Du of Kansas City, Missouri has been doing drag for nearly half of her life. At 30 years old, Ms. Von Du is known simply as Ray Fry when out of drag. She found her stage name when watching a nature special on Black Widow spiders who were described as big, black, and dangerous, the same qualities she saw in herself. Now, the self-proclaimed Ratchet A Queen is hitting Rue's runway bringing fashion, passion, and ass kicking. The plus size diva enjoys showing off her assets, as well as her 26 tattoos. Confidence is key for this queen who is the head of the house of Von Du and his drag sisters with season 10 superstar, Monique Hart. Find her on Instagram as at Thuido Von du. Crystal Method's life changed after seeing the movie Party Monster and being introduced to club kids for the first time. This queen of thrift gains inspiration from just wanting to be different. As a former Eagle Scout, the 28-year-old Springfield, Missouri ingenue has always been handy, using whatever was around to design quirky, creative looks. As a young dragster, she frequented her mother's closet, trying out high heels and accessorizing with as many necklaces as she could manage. One piece of jewelry is never enough for this kooky but kind queen. Find her on Instagram as at Crystal Method. Anime hits the runway. Rock M. Sakura is an anime-inspired queen who loves to tell a story and make people happy through her drag. The 28-year-old San Francisco native was born Brian Stephen Bradford and is of Filipino descent. Her sickening style is a seeming combination of Pikachu and Pleather and has enough eyelashes to make Trixie Mattel do a double take. This cosplay contestant is well-spoken and well-versed in all things manga and J-pop, bringing fun and fantasy to the stage. Find her at at Rock Sakura on Instagram. Aiden John A is the stage name of 29-year-old Devin Lewis. While she may have originated from rural Georgia, her speech and style screams that of a city queen. Though she herself is relatively quiet, her ghoulish glamour is sure to turn heads. Her signature style is equal parts art, androgyny, and alien, and she promises her look will be a first in drag race history. Find her as at Aiden underscore John A on Instagram. Hawaii 5-0 to end after 10 seasons on CBS sets two-hour series finale. Developed by Peter M. Lenkoff, Alex Kurtzman, and Roberto Orsai as a reimagining of Leonard Freeman's classic series and by Lenkoff for the show's entire run, Hawaii 5-0 has been a strong profit generator tour for CBS. In addition to its solid ratings performance, initially on Monday, and as a Friday anchor for the past seven seasons, Hawaii 5-0 has been a big international seller for CBS TV studios, seen in more than 200 countries. Additionally, it was the last broadcast drama series to score a blockbuster off-network deal, landing $2 million an episode from TNT during the series' first season on CBS. It's never easy to say goodbye to a hit franchise that carried on the legacy of the original with such distinction while establishing its own signature style, said Kelly Call, president, CBS Entertainment. From Episode 1, Hawaii 5-0 has been a huge success for us. Thanks to the amazing talents of the producers, writers, cast, and crew, it has played a key role for a decade on our schedule and helped establish our powerhouse Friday night. We cannot be prouder of its quality, longevity, and are thankful for the passionate fan devotion it inspired. Hawaii 5-0 will end its run with its original stars Alex O'Loughlin as McGarrett and Scott Kahn as Dano. I hear both of their current contracts are up at the end of this season. O'Loughlin suffered a serious back injury during the early seasons of the show and has been dealing with effects from it ever since. There was speculation that he may leave the show two years ago but he stayed on after receiving stem cell treatment. I hear this time around, he felt he could not continue. I hear the network explored continuing Hawaii 5-0 with Cons Dano and a new partner but, ultimately, everyone felt this was the right time to end the series. This show has been pretty much every waking moment for the last 10 years of my life, said O'Loughlin. Everywhere I go on this planet, in every language, I am McGarrett to all these people. What we've done, what we've accomplished, it's extraordinary. I can't really put words to express my level of gratitude. I'm just glad to have been a part of this, a part of history, and I'm going to miss it. And to the fans, I don't know how to thank you guys. Thank you for following us the way you have. I'm going to miss you. Aloha. Launching a Hawaii 5-0 reboot had been a top priority for CBS TV studios for more than a decade. There were multiple unsuccessful attempts with other writers and producers until Lenkov came on board, teaming with Kurtzman and Orsai for the pilot. 
It was the first of a slew of successful reboots Lenkov has delivered for CBS and CBS TV studios. Hawaii 5-0 has been such a blessing to me and all of the people who have worked on this incredible show, said Lenkov. I truly learned the meaning of Ohana as the viewers embraced us and the people of Hawaii welcomed us with the privilege to film on their shores. I am forever indebted to the creative genius that was Leonard Freeman who gave us such a beautiful story to begin with. And my eternal gratitude to our cast, led by our hero Alex O'Loughlin, the writers, the production team, our CBS Ohana, and most importantly, you, the fans, who allowed us to come to work with pride and made our series such a success. Mahalo! Hawaii 5-0 currently stars O'Loughlin, Khan, Ian Anthony Dale, Megan Rath, Beulah Cole, Katrina Law, Taylor Wiley, Dennis Chuan, Kimmy Balmulero, and Chi McBride. Like most long-running series, it went through multiple cast transitions. That included the controversial exit of original co-stars Daniel Day Kim and Grace Park after season 7. Returning for the two-hour finale are recurring cast members James Marsters, Victor Hesse, William Sadler, John McGarrett, and Mark DeCascos, Wafat. Hawaii 5-0, which consistently wins its time period, has been watched by almost 40 million viewers this season. In addition, the show has ranked in the top 15 or higher of broadcast dramas during its run. Also, Hawaii 5-0 is CBS most social primetime drama, generating 47 million impressions, 3.7 million engagements, and 3.8 million video views, season to date. For 10 seasons, Alex, Scott, and the rest of the talented 5-0 cast have brought fans exciting adventures in a spectacular tropical paradise, said David Stapp, president, CBS Television Studios. We specifically want to thank Peter and the incredibly talented production team for 10 years of consistently outstanding television. The drama has been a great success for the studio and network, and as a global franchise for our company. We're pleased to give it a big send-off and that viewers will have the opportunity to say goodbye to their favorite characters as the final season wraps. Lenkov Executive produces the series with David Wokov, Matt Wheeler, Kurtzman, and Orsai. Adam Levine apologizes for Maroon 5's unprofessional concert in Chile, I struggled a lot. Adam Levine is apologizing for what he calls was unprofessional behavior during a recent Maroon 5 concert. The moves like Jagger, Singer, 40, spoke out on his Instagram story about his band's performance at Chile's Vina del Mar International Song Festival after the Thursday night show was highly criticized by fans. In the clip, posted on Friday, Levine addressed some of the reactions to the show, explaining to his followers that he was not performing his best that night due to some technical problems. To be totally frank, there were some things holding me back sonically last night, and I let them get to me, he said. It impacted how I was behaving on stage, which is unprofessional and I apologize for that. Describing how he wanted to sound good for the audience, Levine continued, I struggled a lot and sometimes it's really hard for me to mask the struggle. For that, I let you guys down and I apologize. Last night wasn't our best and, for that, all I can say is that I'm really sorry, he added. Nicknamed El Monstruo, the monster, because of the audience's tendency to boo acts off the stage, the Vina del Mar International Song Festival is one of Latin America's oldest and most prestigious music events. The televised festival features singing competitions, as well as musical performances from international artists. On Thursday, Maroon 5 arrived late on stage, causing TV presenters Maria Luisa Godoy and Martin Caracamo to fill in for minutes that became eternal for those present, local outlet CHV News reported. When the band began their performance and the crowd sang along to She Will Be Loved, Loving quipped to the audience, well, if you want to do my job, go ahead, CHV News reported. Shortly after, in a behind-the-scenes video that was shot as the frontman left the stage, Loving appears frustrated at the performance and can be heard saying, that was a TV show, that was not a concert. Fans quickly expressed their displeasure on social media, calling out Loving and the rest of Maroon 5 for a lousy concert. Adam sounds awful and he doesn't have the moves like Jagger at all, one tweeted. We are wondering what happened to him. Another wrote, lousy show in Vina del Mar guys. Haven't seen such unprofessionalism in a good while. You should ask your fans for forgiveness. There are no excuses for doing such a poor job. Love your music, but your show in Vina del Mar was disrespectful to every fan who paid and waited to see you live, a third wrote on Twitter. Very frustrating. Haley Baldwin reveals the party trick that made Justin Bieber call her, now I'm married. During her appearance on The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon, 
which airs Friday night, the model, 23, reveals exactly which television moment caused her now husband, 25, to give her a call and reconcile after the pair took a break from their relationship. People has an exclusive sneak peek at the hilarious interview. Did you do any party tricks? Fallon, 45, asks Baldwin. Well, I say this because the last time you were on our show, you did something that was the most amazing thing ever. Everybody was talking about it, you opened a beer bottle with your teeth. It was really fun and there's actually another funny story behind this and that is that last time I was here, we did this little party trick where I opened a Corona bottle with my teeth, Baldwin explains. The next morning, after the interview had aired, I got a certain phone call from a certain someone and it was a little like, hey, how are you? I saw you on Jimmy Fallon last night. You were looking really good. I love that trick that you did. I had no idea that you can do that. It was so cool. Cut to, I'm now married to that certain someone. The crowd immediately erupts into applause as Fallon himself appears to be flabbergasted by the love story. No, no, he says, even comparing Baldwin and Bieber's romance to a movie storyline. I feel like Jimmy gets a little credit for helping me spark, Baldwin says with a laugh. Yup, that is true. You'd think I'd be invited to your wedding, the host quips before clarifying that his comment was in plain humor. Hey, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. By the way, I know, cause I've seen you and Justin many times and you guys are so cute together. Fallon then shows the audience black and white photos from Baldwin and Bieber's second wedding ceremony. In one photo, Baldwin can be seen licking her husband's mouth. Here's you and Justin, everyone gets to lick the groom, Fallon says in the sneak peek, poking fun. Well not everyone got to lick the groom, okay, she clarifies jokingly. Fallon then notes that Baldwin initially met Bieber when she was just 13 years old in 2009. I know, it sounds like this weird, arranged marriage situation, she begins. We met because my dad, he brought me to the Today Show when Justin performed there. He was no more than 15, I think. When asked if she was a believer at the time, Baldwin reveals that she, in fact, was not. To be honest, this is the truth. He was so new that I didn't really know a lot about him yet, she says. It was really kinda before anything. I met him and his mom and my dad kind of just connected as friends and we invited them over to our house the next day. Him and his mom just came over for family dinner with me and my family and we went bowling. What's funny is that in this photo, I'm super awkward. I had braces, she recalls. Nowhere was there a thought that I was like, yeah, he probably has a crush on me. I did not, that was not the case at all. We just were hanging and now that is my entire husband. It's ridiculous. Bieber and Baldwin tied the knot privately for the first time in a New York City courthouse on September 13, 2018. They celebrated their nuptials with a larger ceremony in front of family and friends in South Carolina on September 30, 2019.